In this example, I want to show you a very quick use case of using the Airtable API inside of WayScript. What we'll be doing is taking a look at how we can delete records from a table, upload our own records from a different data source, and update that data as we need to using the API. Let's jump right in. What we'll first do is create a layer and you can name it whatever you would like. This will put us inside of a development environment. We will click on develop to the left and this gives us this view here. If you do not have a terminal open, be sure to click this button on the bottom and populate it at the bottom of your screen. Perfect. So we'll be using Python to do this. We can do that by creating a new Python script. We will say something like Airtable main.py and this will be the file that we execute when we want to perform these tasks. In this video, we'll have a few dependencies. We can install those into our WayScript environment by using the terminal. We will say pip install and the dependency that we need is pandas. Once this finishes installing, we'll create a requirements. So pip freeze and we will write that to a requirements.txt. So now that we have that in place, just to talk through our problem once more, we have this base that does not match our information in a Excel workbook. What we want to do is get rid of this information over here and replace it with this information here. So that will involve loading in this data of Excel and then writing it via API into Airtable. I want to show you those steps now. So to begin, what we'll be using are personal access tokens through Airtable. To get one of those, what you have to do is go to create tokens new at Airtable.com and then provide the scopes and the base you want these permissions to be applied to. As you see here in the screen, I've added every scope to this token of Wayscript sample project and I've applied it to my example project base. Once you do that and click on create token, it will provide you with this token here. Obviously your token will be unique and it gives access to your Airtable resources. So don't share it with anybody else. In this example, I will just be putting it in plain text, but I would encourage you in your own projects to use the built-in Wayscript secrets manager. The path to Airtable's API is actually unique to your own base and table. What that means is we need a base ID and a table ID. So let's go get those values. These are very easy to get. Whenever you access your table, these will be in the path of your table. So the app, the string that begins with app is going to be your base ID. And then the TBL will be your table. So we will copy those values and paste them in. These are what we need to access the Airtable API. Our next step will be to use our personal access token to create headers. If you're unfamiliar with APIs, don't worry. All a header is, is it gives additional information about the request, such as how to process it, like its content type, or information about authorization that we can use to access protected resources. So in this example, we're accessing protected resources and we need an authorization header to get access to those resources. I will show you what this looks like. So I will copy over some code here and explain it. So we're using a Python function to create headers and we have named it as such create headers. In our headers, we have an authorization and we're creating a bare string that uses our token here. This will give us access to our resources and we're setting the content type of JSON. Like I said, Airtable's endpoint is specific to your base and table. We'll create a line that looks like this. So to explain this, this is the base endpoint of their API and we have these two blanks here. We're using Python to format those two curly brackets. The first one will be with base ID and then the second one will be with the table ID. At this point, this is all the information that we need to start sending out a request. To do that in our Python script, we will say import requests. To group up our imports here, we have a few more that we won't use right away, but we'll be using later on. So we'll go ahead and import those as well. So we will import pandas and import JSON. 
Once we have those in place, we will drop down a few lines. We know our overarching goal is to delete all those records and provide new ones for our base. But let's say that you may want to do a comparison on those records for some reason. So what we might want to do is to list all records. I just very briefly want to show you what this code looks like. So all we would have to do to get all the records would be this. Again, we're creating those headers and we'll send those headers using requests.get, which is just a get request to this endpoint we're creating here using our headers we're creating here. So to get this response, we might say something like print response dot content. To execute this, we would say something like Python and then the name of our file. So Airtable main. Once we execute that, you see that we get back a ton of JSON data here that we might want to do something with. To show you a very simple execution here, we will get rid of this print statement here. And what I'll show you is a few lines of code that look like this. With Airtable records, most of the time you're dealing with IDs of a record. You might want to update a record and to do that using the API, we need these values here. You can see it of ID. Each row inside your Airtable base has an ID. And we use these IDs to do tasks on each of these records. So an important thing to do might be to go through each of these and pull out the ID of each. So to do that, what we might say is create a empty list that will add all of these two. And then for every record in our response.json, which are all contained within this larger JSON of records, we'll go through this list here and get each value. So for each value, it has an ID field and the value of that key of ID is the important thing that we want to pull out. We will append that to the list and go through each of those values. Hopefully that makes sense, but essentially all we're doing is working with JSON to get the important information out of it. We'll save it and execute this again. And now instead of that JSON, you see that we just get a list of values that we can use in future operations. Moving on to our next step, which is to go through and delete all these records so we can replace them with our new ones. To delete all records, we'll be using these IDs that we just pulled out. It is a very simple operation and I will copy and paste it in for us and we'll talk through it. So what this line is saying is we're just going through and getting each record in our table record IDs that we just created and we're sending a delete request to the endpoint of that record using our headers and this will delete each record from our base. In this example, we are doing this one by one. You could imagine if you had a ton of records, you can go up to 10 records per request. You'll still be sending many requests if you have a bunch of data, but it might be easier to send 10 at a time. In my experience, sending one at a time seems to work fine for me. So that's what I'll do in this demonstration. So once we have all of that, we will save it and we will execute again. We'll give it just a second to send out those requests. Now we'll go back to our air table and you see that all of those records are now deleted. This is exactly what we wanted because now what we want to do is to load in our Excel data into this table. Going back to waste group, we will get rid of this line here in this line. The library that we're using to load in Excel data will be pandas. It will look like this. So pandas operates off of something called a data frame. A data frame can be created by saying pandas.read, the file type, ours is, an, ours is an Excel workbook. So read Excel, Airtable data, dot XLSX. This will create that data frame. This data frame is not the same format that Airtable requires to load in to their bases. To get that similar structure, we will use a few lines of code that look like this. So all this is, is we're creating a JSON struct using our pandas data frame. We're doing that by saying df JSON. Finally, Airtable needs a few more little small alterations of our JSON, and we can do that like this. This section can get kind of complex just through words, so I strongly encourage you to look at the example JSON that we're trying to build down below.
in the description. But to explain with words and hopefully not too complex, all we're trying to do is to create a JSON. At the very top level, it has a key of records. These records need to be a list of values that we're creating here, where each value in that list has a JSON of fields and then all the fields and values of it. We're doing this one by one. So this is the perfect place to write to Airtable inside of this for loop. We can do that with just a few more lines of code that look like this. So with each record, we want to post it to our Airtable API using our headers and posting that data as JSON. Finally, we will print our response.content. And this is all it takes to start writing to Airtable. It looks like we need one more dependency. We will say pip install open PYXL. Anytime we add dependencies, we'll do pip freeze and then to our requirements.txt. And now we will try to execute once more. So we'll jump back over to Airtable and watch our values populate from our Excel workbook. And as you see, it just populated. And that's how we can get this example up and working. And that's all it takes to list all your records, start deleting them, and adding new ones from a data source somewhere else. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to post them down in the comments below. Until next time.